Good morning, Stampers, and welcome to this week's bonus Facebook Live. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada. And normally, I do my Facebook Lives on Fridays at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. However, for the month of February, I will be going live every Wednesday with a bonus Facebook Live. Um, so I'm excited to be here today to share a couple projects using the Hello Ladybug bundle from the January to June uh, mini catalog. All right, so let's let's see here. First of all, before I get started, actually I just remembered I forgot to draw for last week's projects. I will do that. Um, let me pull them out as a reminder for anybody who missed it. Last week I did a bonus Facebook Live featuring the On the Horizons or New Horizons suite. So that collection of products also from the January to June 2022 mini catalog. And I always give away the cards that I create in my Facebook Lives to um, a couple, well if there's more than one project, a couple um, people who comment or share my Facebook Lives. So I appreciate all the participation. Um, and if you enjoy this video, please feel free to share it and um, perhaps you'll win the cards for today. All right, so I will announce on my Facebook page, my Stamp Treasures Facebook page, the winners of those cards a little bit later today. I'm very good at forgetting to do that. I really need to pull those out um, before I go live. Okay, so today, like I said, I'm focusing on the Hello Ladybug bundle and I've combined it with the tailored made tag dies and the craft six by six paper pack. This Now this was in the holiday catalog, the July to December mini catalog. However, it did carry over. It's a six by six craft paper. It's got, I love how it feels. It's, it's, it's actually a really nice paper to work with. So we're gonna use this on both of the cards that we create today. I'm gonna use it in a couple different ways. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let me set this aside. And I can set that aside. All right, so for my first bit, I've got a few things that I've already done here. My card base is a piece of real red cardstock. It's just a standard size card base, so five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. Oh, and on my screen, it looks a little bit more like Poppy Parade, but it is real red. And then I've got a white piece for the inside. I'll set that aside. That's just a four by five and a quarter inch piece. Thank you for sharing, Susan. I appreciate that. I've got another four by five and a quarter inch piece of cardstock that I've embossed using, I thought I had pulled it out, the Pinewood Planks emboss, Pinewood Planks? Is that what? No, the Timber Embossing Folder is what it's called. So that's what it looks like. So it gives this beautiful kind of wood grain texture to it. Yeah, you guys can kind of see that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done that. Um, and then I've got a three by four inch piece of that craft paper. I've got a scrap piece of black, a scrap piece of white, and then I used the tailored made tag dies and I die cut the second smallest tag from a piece of white cardstock. Okay, so those are all the pieces and now we can go ahead and get started. So I am going to stamp on this. Now this is a photopolymer stamp and the images are quite bold. So I do suggest that you have a stamp and pierce mat. If you don't have a stamp and pierce mat, you can use a mouse pad. You can use um, even a, ma a magazine or a catalog, your Stampin' Up! catalog even. You just need some sort of cushion underneath for some of these images to get a really good impression. So, and I'm gonna use this floral, this trio of flowers, and I just need to take, didn't realize that I didn't have all my stamps out here. I'll set that aside. Okay, and I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of paper just because I'm gonna create my own kind of patterned paper with this piece. We're gonna use some crumb cake ink and I'm going to stamp the flowers on the background. So on this craft cardstock. So the other thing is when you're using these solid image photopolymer stamps for the very first time, it does help 
to take a white eraser and rub the entire surface and then clean your stamp. Or the other thing that you can do is you can use Versamark and just ink your stamp up with Versamark and then clean it. Um, there's some sort of residue on, or something on the top and sometimes it causes the ink to kind of pool or bubble on your stamp um, and you really notice it on solid image stamps. So there's a little tip for you. Okay, so I've already used mine, so mine are okay, I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna ink that up and just kind, kind of pull out my sample here so I know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of stamp this all over the background. And when I do this to create my own kind of patterned paper, I always make sure that I stamp off of the patterned paper because then it looks like it's pre-patterned paper and it was cut down to the size that we needed. There we go. So now we've got our own fun patterned paper. Okay, we don't need this anymore. All right, now we're done with crumb cake. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? Let's do the envelope flap. Okay, we're gonna stamp the envelope flap with this floral image. I always like to try to have my envelope match the card that I'm cre creating. Okay, and then we'll do this, go off the edges on this side. There we go. So now we've got a matching envelope flap. Okay, so we're done with the crumb cake. We're done with the scrap paper. I'm going to leave this out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my scrap piece of white cardstock and my punch. Now this is a builder punch. So there's two images on here. So if I was to just stamp this, what I want to stamp is the, oh my gosh, I forgot another stamp here. Okay, I must have just left the stamps out for the second card that I'm making. So let me pull this out first and then I'll explain where, where I was going with that idea here. Put this guy back. And we'll pull out the wings. Okay, so the wings are meant to be punched out with this. Now if I were to stamp this kind of right in the middle, then I would flip this over and I, I would be wasting a bunch of extra cardstock. So with my builder punches, I always flip them over as if I'm going to slide it into the cardstock. And I have a look at where the image is that I want to stamp and then punch. So the wings are kind of on the left-hand side of the punch when I flip it over. So if I stamp my wings here on the right-hand side of the cardstock, I can slide this in and I still have, I've conserved the rest of this cardstock. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my real red cardstock, or ink, and I'm gonna stamp my wings. So I'm gonna put it in the same position, okay ink that up with some real red cards or real red ink. I don't know why I keep calling it cardstock and stamp it on the right hand side of my white cardstock and then I can slide this in line it up so that we've got a relatively even border and see look at the just those little little tiny scraps of cardstock were wasted so now I believe I can still fit another one in here so again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the cardstock over so that I can stamp it exactly the same way just on the opposite side so I am going to move it up just a little bit just because it fits kind of a little bit better Okay, and then we'll slide it in. So you, can you see how that conserved cardstock, I managed to get two uh, sets of wings 
out of that one spot. If I hadn't thought that through, I would have only gotten one set of wings from there. So there's just a little cardstock saving tip for you. All right, we can set that aside. Okay, and I think we're done with this for now. Now the last thing that I want to stamp is I'm gonna bring in my tag and I'm gonna use this cute little hello. And we're gonna take our memento ink and I'm gonna stamp it in the lower left corner of my tag. And my tag is gonna go sideways. Actually, now that I think of it, I think my tags are going sideways on both of the cards that we're making today. Okay, so we've got our greeting. Okay, so now I think, oh, we have one more thing to do here and then we should have all of our pieces. Okay, I'm just gonna catch up on the comments here. Good morning, Susan and Elaine and Sue and Christine. And Catherine, welcome. Happy Wednesday to all of you. All right, so now I want to punch the, the actual ladybug body. So I'm gonna see if it fits in here. Yes, it does. So we'll punch that guy first. So we need two of them. So I've got one there. And then the other one, I'm gonna go to this edge. So again, if I had, if I stamp it closer to this edge, then I'm gonna end up with some black wings that I don't need. So I'm gonna go closer to this edge. And then I get very little waste. Okay. So now I believe we have all of our pieces. I'll slide these little scraps out of the way. Let's bring them back and assemble our card here. Okay, so we're gonna take our embossed layer of white and we're gonna add that to our card front. Just like that. And then this piece will go on next. Again, just in the center. Does anybody already have this bundle? It's such a sweet little bundle. Okay, and then our tag, we are going to feed through a little piece of this ribbon. Now this ribbon is part of the Valentine suite at the front of the mini catalog. It is real red faux linen ribbon. And I love how soft it is. It's a really, really nice ribbon. So we're gonna take I don't know, maybe about a three inch piece. And feed that through. And then of course, we're going to include some Baker's twine because Baker's twine is pretty much on every single one of my cards, almost. Uh, this time we're gonna use black. So I'm gonna cut about six inches. And we're gonna wrap this around and tie a bow. And that will hold our ribbon together. So I'll just pull this up. I'm being mindful of, I know that I'm gonna have to trim these ends a little bit because of the positioning of my tag and I don't want them to hang over the edge of my card so that my card will easily fit inside of the envelope. So I'm putting my Baker's Twine closer to where the hole is or the edge of the tag, just knowing that I will need to trim those ends a little bit. Okay, because this is gonna go here. And so you can see, I'm gonna need to trim those ends. So I'm gonna save that until I actually stick it down, but I will trim these, that just a little bit. Okay. All right, this is going to get popped up using some dimensionals, which I did have here. Oh, here we go. So I'm just gonna use a couple of them here. And this is gonna go right in the lower 
right corner, just like that. I love that pop, pop, pop of black. We're going to bring black in in a few different ways on this card. And now I can trim these so that they're a little bit smaller. There we go. All right, now let's assemble our ladybug. So we're going to take the wings. I like to curl the wings up just a little bit using my bone folder so it looks like the ladybug is flying. I'm going to put just a little bit of multi-purpose glue, which is almost empty, on here. And then let's put this on here so you guys can see. And then I'm going to line this up right where the head and the body meet up. Just like that. Okay, and then we're going to take a little piece of a dimensional. Now where are my regular scissors? Huh. Okay, let's pull these guys out. All right, so we'll just use a piece of a dimensional and I'm going to pop that on the back of the ladybug's head. And then I'll put some multi-purpose glue on the body. And the ladybug is going to sit right like that. So there are two pops of black. And the third way that we're going to pop, bring in some black is we're going to bring in some classic matte dots. And we'll use the black ones. We'll add one here and then a couple of the little, little ones. And there's our third pop of black. I love bright colors with a little bit of black. I just think it really makes the bright, like the red just pop off of that. Just having that black, those black accents on there. It's the same with any of the colors that are in the, the brights collection. I just, I think any one of them just looks so sharp with a, t a touch of black. Okay, so now for our inside piece, we're going to repeat that same idea with the ladybug. So I'll curl up the wings, add a bit, a little, a little bit of glue, and then we'll attach it. And I'm not going to add a greeting to the inside of this card because I think this could be used for any, any number of things. So sometimes it's nice to have cards with no specific greeting on the inside so that you can personalize it. All right, let's open this up. And look at that. It just brings in that adorable little ladybug into the inside of our card. And there we go. Our first card is done. And then we've got our matching envelope. Isn't that sweet? Okay, now for the second card, we are going to do, slide that aside. I wanted to show that your ladybugs don't always need to be red and black. Okay, so we're gonna do something that's a little bit less traditional and I have, let me just slide some of these pieces out of the way here. Okay, I have, or I had a whole bunch, actually if you look in my package of craft card stock here, I have a whole bunch of like two inch strips and less of strips of craft card stock because over the holidays I did a ton of pillow boxes um, with this craft paper. So I had these two inch strips left. So I thought there's gotta be some way that I can use these two inch strips. And so my idea was to use that same tag that I used for this, the first card, which was the second, let me pull out my tag dies, show you which one it is, the second smallest tag. So you can use either this one or the decorative edge one, doesn't matter. Um, and I die cut three of them so I could get two out of each one of these strips. So I used up, ended up using up a couple of those strips anyways. So I've got three of those. My card base is going to be a thick basic white. 
So just standard size, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So we've got those. I've got a few scraps of white here. So this one is going to be for my greeting. And then the other two I'm gonna use for stamping. So I just grab scraps from my bin. And then I have also have a little bit of baker's twine as well. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's clean this so I can use the stamp that I need. Take that off, set it aside, bring back this one. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back my stamp and pierce mat for my stamping. And this time we are going to use this large leaf and I'm going to use some pear pizzazz ink. So I'm going to ink this up. And stamp it down on here. Okay, and then I will fussy cut that. So I've gone ahead and done that. And then, now did I do the inside this? No, okay, all right. I'm trying to remind myself what I did on the inside. Okay, and then for this guy, we're gonna use a different ladybug. So we're gonna use this one. So this particular one doesn't coordinate with the, um, the punch. And we're gonna do it in a different color. So we're gonna stamp this one in Calypso Coral. I'm gonna stamp it once on this little scrap. See, doesn't she look cute, even in a different color? I'm gonna do it once on the inside of my card. And then I'm gonna also do it on my envelope. Okay, now this is a two-step stamp, so there's several different ways that you can do the two-step. So if you look here, now on that first card, I could have taken some black and added those dots, black dots, into the red wings. I really like how it looks with the white like that, so I chose to just leave it like that. Um, and then here, we can add this on to the ladybug. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna use petal pink because I love petal pink and calypso coral together. So we're gonna take that solid image and fill in these three ladybugs that we stamped. And look how cute that is. So adorable. There's so many different color combinations that you can do. That one, and then this guy. Do you guys remember before photopolymer stamps when we had to pull out our stamp -a jig to get these all lined up? Oh my gosh, things are so much easier with photopolymer stamps. All right, now we're gonna do our greeting. So I've got a strip of white here, and I'm going to take, I don't really need this anymore. I'm gonna take the greeting that says, it's a good day, and just stamp that on some white cardstock. Okay, and I think we have all the pieces that we need now. And you know what I just, I know what I realized I did. Oh no, I did it right, okay. I thought my card went landscape, but it doesn't. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to one of these tags. And we're gonna add this to the middle of, let's center this and try to get it close to the middle. Okay, so this guy's gonna go on flat, just like that. But these two are going to get popped up using dimensionals. So 
this one's popped up and I'm going to put it about an, maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch from the other one, but I do want it lined up. There we go. And then this one's going to go above it again, about the same distance as the bottom one. And that just creates kind of an interesting backdrop. So yeah, I could have just cut a rectangular piece and put it on there, but I think this just creates a little bit more visual interest. All right, so this guy needs to be fussy cut. I went ahead and fussy cut one so that you didn't need to watch me do that. And I've got about a 12 inch length of Baker's twine here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pull I think I've already, oh no, I just want a couple threads. Okay, so I'm separating, separating it so that it's not quite as thick. So this is two threads put together and, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to intertwine this or create some, some sort, like some texture in behind my leaf. So my leaf is going to go like this on the card. And so I want a little bit up here. And I, I usually do like kind of a figure eight. You can also make it messy and just kind of wrinkle it all up. It doesn't have to have as much structure as what this has. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a look. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now what I'm gonna do, because remember this one is popped up, this one is flat. So I'm gonna have a look and see where, let's do, it's gonna go this way. Okay, so this bit right here can use a dimensional and the rest will use flat adhesive. Because I don't wanna double up on the dimension. So I'll just carefully add a bit more adhesive on there and then gonna go about like that and then our ladybug is gonna go on top of that just like that and then we're gonna take our greeting and we're gonna snip it down and I'm just gonna use scissors you can use a paper cutter if you want but it's so tiny it's a little bit easier to use scissors and then this will go on just flat. And I'm gonna put it right about here. Just like that, look how cute that looks. And then we're gonna finish it off with some polished dots because it's always good to have just a little bit of bling on our cards. And we're going to use the pink ones do that. I'm going to do one big one and two little ones. There and one last one right here. And there we go. There's our second card and we've got our matching envelope and then the inside has a matching ladybug as well. So that's a good way to, or it's a good sample of how you can switch out the colors. And because our cards are handmade, they don't have to be in traditional colors. We can make them whatever color we want to make them. Um, so here again is the first one that I made. There we go. So two samples. This one is a great one showing you how the punch coordinates with the stamp set. This one um, just shows you some of, the, some of the other images and in a variety of colors. And then I've got this one here that I created. Now in this stamp set, there is this floral stamp. And it, I wanna point out that it actually works with our medium daisy punch. So the, this, the petals on this stamp are a little bit wider. So you do you lose a, just a touch of some of the flower, but it punches it out. The petals line up, so it punches it out nicely. 
So this, I don't know if some of you recognize that this uh, layout, but this is a very similar layout to a card that I created. I wonder if I have it handy using, uh, oh, I do here. So I basically took this same layout, completely different suite, and recreated that card. Couple differences, obviously. I added some DSP on the inside, and then I still use the same punch as the base. Here I used vellum instead of the ribbon, but I do have some of that red linen ribbon in there as well. And then the leaves were done using the wings from the ladybug. Okay, so that's another way that you can use the punch. And then I have a class coming up, a card class featuring the Hello Ladybug bundle, where we are going to make six cards, three or two each of three different designs. And I thought I'd share you a quick flip through. So we've got that one, we've got that one, and that one. Plus, I will be sharing a, a fourth project that is super cute um, using the punch for something completely different. All right, so that class is on February 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. It's on Zoom, but it will re be recorded if you can't make it. Um, then what I do is I send out the recording with the PDF, with, which has photos, measurements, a full supply list, and everything. I send that out to all registrants the next day. The last day to register for the class is February 6th because I need to get the kits in the mail so that they arrive in time for class. So if you'd like to join us, I'd love to have you. I did post in the, des the description um, a link to where you can find more information. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the projects from today. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to comment on the, the video um, for your chance to win one of these two cards that I created. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time for another couple cards. Take care. Bye, guys.